you know, this was a, uh, you kind of have to set the setting. These individuals arrived when there was a, a gas leak. There was no fire when they arrived. So specifically, uh, you know, there's some tactics and strategies that individuals decide uh, to put in place. A lieutenant um, uh, of the department, he's actually a brand new lieutenant, uh, uh, his name is Peter St. John's, actually made some critical decisions today that saved not only lives of citizens, but saved lives of firefighters. Personally, made some efforts to evacuate that building that uh, were admirable. Um, the way they positioned their apparatus in expectation that a possible explosion could occur, uh, the pulling of hose lines and the way they pull, uh, placed those hose lines in anticipation for an explosion that might occur, and probably the single most important thing that they did to save their lives today, which is um, not that common. Uh, they put their air pack uh, masks on and uh, just didn't feel right. Something doesn't, didn't feel right. They donned their air pack masks. That alone probably saved the lives of those firefighters. The residents in the building the actions of uh, Lieutenant St. John today took some critical steps. Uh, I've got to clarify the story, but uh, my understanding is he pulled those, uh, uh, went in on his own and pulled the, uh, the uh, fire alarms, which allowed those individuals to evacuate. Had those steps not been taken, we would have been having a different conversation this afternoon. This man single-handedly, I believe, and just what I know so far, and I have yet to visit him at the hospital, I'll be leaving there as soon as I'm done here. Save the lives of a lot of citizens today, and a lot of firefighters. Is he the one in surgery? He is. And for what? Are we allowed? Um, we're not going to discuss that. You know, I'm not absolutely. I'm abs actually not absolutely certain of his injuries. They were serious. Um, you've heard the tapes. Uh, my understanding is that uh, voice on those tapes were his mayday calls. Um, so we'll be visiting as soon as I can get over to the hospital. Before. I don't know yet. I haven't had an opportunity to actually have the conversation with them. These are secondhand uh, discussions I've had with other individuals who have, uh, have talked to him. And the positioning of the truck you mentioned, how did they position it? How did they position their hotline? Yeah, very good question. The question was how were the trucks positioned? Um, whenever you go to a fire where there's a potential for collapse, uh, engine companies are placed in a matter that if the walls were to collapse, they wouldn't collapse onto firefighters in the middle of an operation or the actual engine companies or truck companies themselves. Those apparatus that he showed up today and uh, positioned them were positioned out of those collapse zones, which in and of itself is a smart move. I arrived, I was actually on my way to uh, Salem, Oregon for a meeting and, uh, when the call came in and I was called by my division chief explaining to me that there were uh, several firefighters down at an incident. I turned the car around and drove back. It took me about 20 minutes. I was only about 20, 30 minutes down the highway. As I'm walking up, I'm watching a fire, someone on a stretcher covered in blood being moved to an ambulance. And I asked another passing firefighter, is that one of ours? He said, yes. Next firefighter I saw was his face was bleeding, completely covered in blood, walking, making his way to the medical group for treatment. I had a brief conversation with him. Um, as I talked to more individuals, it was clear that had they not been on air, had they not had their faces covered, that they would have been severely, severely injured. By flying debris or fire? Or? All of it. 